I think when you look at the idolatry in our world today, is your heart broken or are you, is your heart hardened? Part of the reason why I think we want to talk about this sort of like post COVID or 2023 and beyond is this, the world has shifted a little bit and yep. that has affected every industry, yeah. kind of every effort. And it's definitely affected how we develop leaders. Yep. Like we're creating pathways and we're yep. recruiting people into pathways more than selecting them for a role. Good. That's the big shift on this Very one. Good. Hello, and welcome to the Momentum Ministry Partners podcast. In our fellowship of Christ, our leadership of the local church, and our parenting of the children entrusted to us, we all seek forward momentum. This podcast is designed to provide that momentum in our God-given roles of leadership as we partner together to equip today's Christian leaders for tomorrow's opportunities. Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, Katie. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. I'm excited because you're back for another episode. I know. I'm excited to be in town and be able to do this. And in this episode, we're kind of we're going to do it a little different. We're, we're not necessarily like playing host or guest. Mm-hmm. You're no newcomer to the Momentum podcast. Uh, hopefully our audience has listened to an episode or two that you've been on. Um, hopefully they've listened to one or two that I've been on, but I, think, I can guarantee that. I, I think that, that we're going to, we're going to, we want to kind of talk today about, uh, something that's very unique and we're going to use, we're going to use a, a word that maybe is going to make some people a little nervous. So brace yourselves. Uh, if your kids are listening, put, put earmuffs on them. COVID is what we're going to oh, I'm like, what's the word? <laughs> oh, like, no. What are we going to say? <laughs> I honestly, I've, I like, I'm familiar with people who don't like talking about COVID right now. They're like, oh. nope, it's gone. We're moving past it. We're done with it. We're talking about post COVID. We're talking about so post COVID. Maybe we're like 2022 and beyond or 20, actually 2023 is what we're talking about. Life in 2023. There you go. How do we develop leaders in a post COVID world? Mm. Because we are now, please, dear Lord Jesus, post COVID. Right. But the, the, the reality is, I think sometimes in leadership, we both love what we get to do with momentum because we get to develop leaders. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're good at. That's what God's gifted us with. That's what we're passionate about. That's what this whole organization wants to do. And yet this like really big global pandemic thing happened yeah. and our churches and our ministry and what we thought we knew about covid or about ministry, COVID messed it all up. It messed up my brain. I couldn't even say that right. So, Katie, let's let's kind of dive into this conversation. We just got off of uh, a few weeks ago. We had our Momentum Pro cohort. Uh, it was our our second big event. We kicked it off. We had. I don't know, 60, 70 pastors, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, ministry leaders here in Akron. We brought them all to Akron, Ohio. Uh, You kind of oversaw the lead pastor side with uh, Jeff and Keith Manier. And then I kind of ran the student ministry side. It was so fun to get to do. We kind of did things together. Then we kind of broke them back out. You know, we planned it all out. We had it all mapped out. Uh, But it was multiple days of just kind of like, hey, we're, we're healthy leaders. You're in healthy, growing churches there's a whole lot of resources right now for pastors that are burnt out for churches that need help. Um, and we're kind of in this weird spot where we're like, we want to be proactive and like keep the pastors in the churches healthy that are there. We know of all kinds of tremendous resources for those who aren't, we'll, we'll point you in those directions and get you connected, but like, let's help them. And we got to do that in some really fun ways. So tell us about what you guys do with the the senior pastors at Momentum Pro. Yeah, it was How does great. it lend towards this? Well, I think in part of the reason why I think we want to talk about this sort of like post COVID or 2023 and beyond is this, the world has shifted a little bit and yeah. that has affected every industry, yeah. kind of every effort. And it's definitely affected how we develop leaders. And I think if we don't get our head around that, it's easy to spend a lot of time and energy on things that aren't fruitful, or it can start mm. to feel like, oh man, I'm never going to get this kind of train back on the on the rails right. if uh, if I can't figure this out. And so we wanted to maybe take a little time to fast forward that conversation. And yeah, a few weeks ago when we had our pro cohorts, so our cohorts are for uh, lead pastors and uh, student ministry leaders. We have a three-year program, cohort program to kind of really help develop leadership within them, but then also how do they multiply their leadership in their local mm-hmm. churches? So when we got together, we brought in some great guest speakers. We were talking a lot about uh, gender identity, Dr. Julie 
Julie Slattery, who's been on the podcast I know before, yeah. she came in and talked about how we can build churches and ministries that come in uh, with a good understanding of the biblical concepts around that. How do we love on families who are navigating those kind of challenges? We, uh, I, I got to interview the president of Campus Crusade for Christ from Canada. They're doing a lot of incredible, innovative research and uh, experimenting, I guess you could say, pilot programming on how to do evangelism and how young adults are growing up in the faith. And I always love to watch the trends happening in Canada, just like in Europe, because mm -hmm. uh, their Canada and Europe are, of course, further along in us and moving from a Christian uh, kind of culture to a post-Christian culture. And so we can learn a lot from our brothers mm -hmm. and sisters there doing ministry in those two places. And uh, Canada is more closely related to where we're at now. So I always want to watch the mm -hmm. trends that are happening in spiritual movements and uh, yeah. ministry dynamics there. So we learned a lot from him of what they're seeing uh, sort of post-COVID mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then we talked with uh, an executive pastor, uh, Britt, uh, Ryan, Ryan Britt, Britt from yeah. uh, Church of 1122 to talk to us about building culture and how to uh, steward generosity. So we had some great dynamic conversations, but a lot of times in these cohorts, the best information is what we share with each other. Mm -hmm. So all of these pastors in the senior pastor cohort, we represented 80,000 weekend attendants. So wow. that's a big reach that we were able to host here. And yep. so the things that we learned are really going to touch a lot of people, but that's also a mm -hmm. lot of information that we can learn from. And this topic of leadership development is always a big one. It was, you know, in the... It has been, you know, since I've been in ministry 25 years, it's trying to raise up and build up enough leaders to really fulfill the mission that God's called us to. But yeah. it has changed pretty significantly, I would say, in how we need to think about it, yep. the way we approach it. Um, even the way we interact with people around leadership. You and I have mm -hmm. had conversations about that, mm -hmm. about how do you even cast vision differently in today's day and age. Right. Those are all things that we're figuring out together, but we mm -hmm. wanted to share some of those thoughts now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fun to get to like do this uh, in a team environment. Yeah. It's good to get to... to uh, you know, we kind of lived through COVID. I started working with momentum like <laughs> March one of 2020 and like, okay, this two weeks later, <laughs> I think this COVID thing is real. Like, <laughs> so the, a lot has shifted. You're right. Uh, and so I think that it was so fun getting to bring all these leaders together and hearing from their different ministry contexts. What's, what's working, what's not, what are you frustrated with? Like, and what's different and, and what's different? Like what's what are you changed? having to figure out? Yeah. So we actually, in the student ministry cohort, we spent a lot of time the very first day diving into like headlong into culture because in student ministry, like culture changes so fast and I think COVID only sped it up even more. Well, and I would say when we say post-COVID, particularly here in the United States, I don't know what, how many listeners we have from other countries, but in the United States in particular, the season of COVID was not just about a health pandemic. Right. We also had a major racial reconciliation yep. issue. We had serious political divides yep. and both of those things really impacted our uh, faith communities and yeah. our churches. And the so isolation and loneliness, the impact all of, of those pieces, health. pastors started getting, yeah. uh, kind of attacked from their own church members mm -hmm. about being too much or not enough of things. There were a little mm -hmm. double binds that they were navigating, still navigating. Yeah. A lot of health. people left church, um, the mental health crisis that's come. So yeah. the dynamics aren't really just only about COVID. It's Correct. really the shifting we felt in our culture, that's which good. is what you're alluding to yes. is culture has shifted dramatically from a yes. variety of reasons during quote COVID, but we're not, we're, we're sort of writing on different ground now. Yep. Yeah, in, in, in the student ministry conversation, we like whiteboarded. We had all these whiteboards all over the place. I do love a good whiteboard. And, and we had a we had ourselves a very good whiteboard session in the student ministry leaders and we talked about like what are the impacts uh, in student ministry? What what are the things that are like full bore coming at our students? And and we had we filled a what are the six by ten foot whiteboard full of of stuff. What are some of the things that youth pastors are seeing that are yeah. maybe either new or at a new level against, the, uh, not against, but like yeah. that are impacting our teenagers? What we boiled it down to were a couple of things. One, identity. Um, how we view ourselves um, or, or don't, <laughs> how we should view ourselves. That is a big thing that every youth pastor is trying to solve. And, and through COVID, I mean, you got to think like through the, the two years, let's call it for sake of numbers, like two years of isolation or like lives getting put on pause mm -hmm. for a high school student or, or a middle school student that are now high school students. That's the, that's 
a significant percentage of their life yeah. for us where I'm like, I'm, I'm 40. Like that's, I'm like two years. Isn't that like, whatever, like, I've and had it's at naps a pretty critical like, developmental season, yes, also mm-hmm. for sure. So that that impacts their identity, and and a lot of the things that they thought they knew or that they were starting to like figure out, it all shifted, and things went online. Which then we talked about that led into technology, where technology mm. was a thing before, but social media has gone rampant. We, you know, we shared some statistics about like the the number of hours that students are on a device or a screen it's haunting i actually looked up even like further like some of the statistics on uh do you know that the average like student i'll see if i can pull these stats back spends the average teenager spends three hours a day on instagram Mm. that's it's even i think it was like i think it was more for tiktok or maybe they were put together but but i'm like three hours a day and then like the third issue that we talked about was like family dynamics, mm. like family dynamics have changed. Like the, the norm is not like a mom and a dad and the kids. That's not normal. That's the minority now. And so when that you're changed thinking before, but their working dynamics, who's working from home, who's not, who's around, yep. who's not work schedule, all that yep. thing time has together. Like, you know, you may be in, in the same house, but now you're doing school on a screen yeah. and you're you're working at home. And so there's less boundaries of like, well, now my day has ended and now I go home and now we eat dinner together and it's work just continues into the evening. So like all of those family dynamics, our identity, technology, how we compare ourselves in a student ministry, that's all totally like changed, morphed. And, and where we landed with that, we actually looked at, at Paul when he was in Athens uh, and we, we did this in, with our staff yep. um, and we looked at like, you know, when Paul's going into Athens and, and he's like seeing the idols, the idolatry, I think when you look at the idolatry in our world today, is your heart broken? Or are you, is your heart hardened mm. towards that? And so we talked about that as student ministry leaders. And then to figure out, like, how do you how do we as ministry leaders to these students, how do we help them identify the idols in their life to understand their identity, the impact that social media can have or harm? And then how do you like how do you as student ministry leaders pull in their families How do you do ministry, not just to the students, but to their parents who statistically still have far more time with the students and should be the primary disciplers of their students, not just the youth pastor's job, but a parent's job. And so through COVID, I think the impact of that has been we lost our like what we do in terms of student ministry and we for sure lost our how, how do we do it? But we've got to remember our why. And that's what Paul did. And so when he's going around Athens and he's seeing the idolatry, he's like, the why matters. And and it says, and I forget that passage, I think it's Acts 18, but he talks so clearly about Jesus and his resurrection. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's the model that we need to be doing for student ministries is to talk about Jesus and his resurrection. And that's what we should be camping on. I know you. we want to go back to like, hey, we're going to have a middle school lock-in and we're going to do a dodgeball tournament. That's your, your like how. And I know you want to go back to like the what that you used to know. But if you've, if you've lost your why, mm. man, that's scary. Well, you bring up a point that really, especially as we talk about leadership development, you have to lead yourself well. And if we've lost our why, if we aren't mentally healthy, if we aren't connected in community, Mm -hmm. if we aren't spending time with God every day, it's really, in fact, we can't pass that on to other people. And so, yeah, getting back to that core piece. And I think as leaders, one of the things we found is uh, we all have to take a moment and recalibrate those things for ourselves. I think a lot of us, yeah. uh, if we've been in ministry for a while, particularly, there's sort of just like this keep pushing forward, like eventually it all works out, you know, a little bit of ability, a little bit of faith, and a little bit of energy, you know, even if it's <laughs> through caffeine, you know, we can like make it through. But yeah. I think for um, folks that have been serving in ministry, either volunteer or uh, paid staff, there is a uh, fatigue that is set in 
that you really have to get to back to kind of yeah. some of those core pieces and remember why we're doing what we're doing and that what yeah. we're doing does matter and that we might be in this kind of foggy in between times. There aren't mm. a lot of clear steps. Many of the strategies we were using before aren't effective anymore. They're not working. Uh, our people aren't coming back. Our kids aren't coming back. They're showing up a little, um, uh, more behind than before. Like when we had yeah. youth conference this last summer, we noticed that just the behavior and the social um, connections students were making were a little younger than what we've experienced before because there was mm -hmm. this big giant pause developmentally. Mm -hmm. And so our kids aren't doing the things that we're used to them doing. When we're working yep. with juniors in high school, they aren't doing things that juniors always do or always did before. And mm -hmm. so we have to recalibrate ourselves and that that takes a lot of energy and that takes a, um, it kind of throws us off our game, especially if we felt like we were doing really good and the, right. we kind of nailed the how to do this and all of a sudden our job description changed even though we had the same role because the world changed yeah. that requires a lot of us as leaders it requires a lot as followers of Christ it's I'm sure many of us have gone through the thing of like Lord why am I here like yeah. why do I have to do ministry now I want to go back to the 50s or I want to you know wait till this all gets settled down like what am I doing here now and and he's called us to be leaders now and so you know gearing ourselves up to step up to yeah. that challenge and yeah. lead in the midst of it that's really what we're all being called mm -hmm. to now. Yeah. I don't think either of us were around in the 50s, were we? Hey, we hope you're enjoying the episode so far. We'd like to just take a second, hit pause, and share about one of our ministries we have with you. Travel Teams offers experience with sharing your faith, learning many ministry skills, giving testimonies, building team relationships, and so, so much more. Team members have the opportunity to memorize scripture, learn to spend quality time with God, and be a part of a discipleship group, as well as learning to work hard. Foundational character qualities will be emphasized and taught by pastors, national ministry leaders, and trained adult mentors. To learn more about our travel teams and how to be a part of the life change that is happening there, visit us at www.buildmomentum.org. No, but I always wanted to go back to them because it just, just seemed like such ask. an idyllic time. And if anyone oh, knows me very go. well, you know, I probably would not have thrived as a woman in the 50s other than the skirts. But there yeah, but right. just so, it seems like such a happy time. Nice. <laughs> I, and I think you're exactly right, though. Like if you're if you're kind of stuck looking at the past and yeah. what it was, you're probably going to miss out on some opportunities that are right in front of you. And, and maybe the, I think that's like, we know God uses everything for good. Nothing is wasted. His kingdom, he knows he's got it all planned out. And so like, how, like, how do we just kind of reset all of that in our ministry focus as leaders? You know, Jeff and I did a, a episode a, a couple of weeks ago about like rest mm -hmm. and Sabbath rest yeah. and both a, having a sabbatical, but also how do you like manage your time week to week? So you know, if that's you as a leader and you're wrestling with that, like go listen to that episode if you haven't listened to that. But Katie, you're exactly right. Like these are things that like they've made doing ministry and especially developing leaders really, really hard. So one of the things that you and I've talked about, you kind of introduced this idea of like high school sports, college mm -hmm. sports, and then being a professional sport. G give us that like concept. I think this is so good. Uh, to talk through in terms of like developing leaders. Yeah. So there's different kinds of cultures that we have on our teams or in our churches. And it's really important to know the kind of leadership culture you have. And there's no one right or wrong, but we use a sports analogy. I don't know why I keep doing sports analogies because I'm actually terrible at talking about sports. But <laughs> I they, love it. I think it's they, great. <laughs> I know you always write down funny things I've mentioned during it, but um so we've got high school sports, we've got college sports, we have professional sports, and they all have very different kinds of cultures. So if you're leading in sort of like a high school um, mindset or high school culture, it's wh whoever comes to your church gets to be a part of the team. And when you're doing leadership development, it means every person that comes in, we see this a lot more in smaller contexts or more rural contexts, mm -hmm. uh, whoever shows up gets to have a job. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we see this even in small groups, if you have real missionally minded small group strategy, mm -hmm. everyone gets a job in a small group. Someone's in charge of the outreach. Someone's in charge of hospitality. Someone's in charge of teaching. Someone's in charge of prayer. Someone's in charge of care, right? Everybody gets a job. That's high school. You take yep. everybody who comes in, everybody's on the team. Everybody plays. Some people are the quarterback. Some people are the water boy, but everyone's on the team and everyone is celebrated. Yep. But then that team also kind of moves on. So, mm. um, that high school has a lot of fluidity to it and people kind of come and go and you never are quite sure what your team's going to be for the next season. Yep. Uh, the next level up would be college, where there are some kids who come to your college and want to play sports with you, and they, you're, they're on the team because they're students or they're good enough to make mm -hmm. the cut. But then you also have scholarship money, and you do some recruiting, and you go out and you find 
kids that you want to be on your team and you get the right quarterback mm-hmm. and you get the right center and you do all these things to kind of build a good team. And uh, college ministry tends to have a lot of development with it, with the goal of graduating people onto other things. They might go mm-hmm. on to professional sports, but they might go on to lead business or they might go on to um, start a family or they might go on to lead in ministry, but there's a, there's a developmental. So I'm bringing you in to make you, to bring you into this great developmental culture. And then I'm graduating and sending you out. So there's so intentionality good. and I have some control yeah. over the players that yeah. I have. I can be selective. We see this a lot in church world when you have some paid staff members, right? right? I like interview a bunch of people. I select the one I want. I hold them accountable in different ways than I do maybe the volunteers, mm-hmm. but we build this kind of leadership culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the, the next level up would be professional sports where actually everybody's paid. These are like career people. We see this in bigger yeah. church contexts. So I can hire you to be my youth pastor. And if you don't do a great job, I can fire you and hire <laughs> another person. See ya. Uh, yeah. And so we have higher demands. There's higher accountability. There's more transition at the leadership level. Mm-hmm. So what we've seen now kind of post 2020 in sort of 2023 moving forward is that many of our churches who were playing pro sports and maybe have been playing it for a while are now playing college. Yeah. They have to appreciate the leaders they've been given. Mm. Not everybody stayed. They don't have the budget to afford. And anyone who was playing college is now oftentimes playing high school. I can't afford these staff members. We have half the size church that we did before. And so part of what's shifted in leadership development is that you have to make sure that you've adjusted to the new culture God has you leading. Mm. If you don't have a lot of budget money, if you're down to you're the only paid person or you have just a few part-time people, you have to change your expectations and the way you recruit and the way you develop people. And the way you develop a team of walk-ons is very different than how you interview for people that you can hire and fire really easily because there's 10 people who can take that job. Yeah. Yeah. Some churches lost their entire like offensive team or they lost their special unit. Like they lost the like people that are, that were faithful and leaned on and trusted. And so like, now what do we do? And not just paid people, but also key volunteers. And I would say when I talk about staff, I mean those higher level volunteers that are, that feel like staff, you entrust pastoral responsibilities to them. So small group leaders, elders, uh, the people that are running your student ministry that take Mm -hmm. kids to momentum youth conference, like though all all of those people that are yeah. your trusted folks, um, they may not be around like they were before. And that can be very difficult. Mm-hmm. There's a loss and a grief that has to take place. Mm-hmm. But then there's a reality check. And I think that's what I'm trying to call people to is there is a time to grieve the loss. Yeah. There is a time to get the help you need to kind of move on. You have to reconnect with the why and wherever you're at on that process. We want to support that and encourage you to do it. But at the same time, as a leader, a part right. of a leader's responsibility is articulating reality. It's recognizing where you're really at and adjusting the tools from your toolbox that you're using. And maybe you haven't dusted off those high school or college tools in a while, but you have to like rebuild community, rebuild connection, do leadership development in a little different pace now in this situation. Yeah, Katie, that's so good. Uh, maybe maybe you're listening to this and you're like, wait, are they talking about running a high school ministry and a college ministry? <laughs> nope. Like rewind, go back, go back four minutes, listen to that again. Make sure that you get that because this is such a good analogy that I think if if any of us in whatever ministry we're in, like really evaluate and look at like, is this where we're at? what what were our norms what's now the new normal yeah. and we've talked a lot at momentum like within our organization with travel teams with our urban center partnerships with momentum youth conference we we have to establish new baselines like we we can't compare ourselves or our numbers or even effectiveness to like the pre covid number because all that has shifted and and we talked about things got put on pause like there's developmental pieces and so maybe you need to look at and realize like hey we need to stop give yourself some grace stop comparing to your pre-covid attendance or your pre-covid giving or volunteers or any of that like let's establish new normals but i think that also has to apply to how we develop leaders too and so that mindset needs to shift Let's let's click one more step further into this, Katie, mm-hmm. as as we want to help equip people to think leadership development in a, in a post covid world. What does that look like? Because you can't just like, hey, I got all these 15 people who are serving in my youth ministry. I'm going to develop them as leaders. Now, maybe I have like three or four that are that are there and they're burnt out because they're doing everything. Yeah. So what does developing a leader look like now? 
and how do we kind of help identify them and and what does that look like? Right. So let me give you a few handles for each of these kinds of cultures. Mm -hmm. If you now find yourself in more of a high school Mm -hmm. scenario, so you're just thankful someone showed up to be able to work in the children's ministry room, right? Uh, And the worship team and all of those things (laughs) is uh, I I don't want us to necessarily lower standards, but we do have to get to those standards in different ways. And so we do Mm -hmm. have to become okay being grateful for the people God has has brought to us. So I think one of the first keys, especially in high school, is to really turn towards a heart of gratitude. I think it's easy sometimes to focus a little bit on what we lost, on who's not here, on the things that used to make life a lot easier, or we could move at a higher rate, a higher clip, move faster in our own leadership. So we have to, again, Uh, open up our tool belt and and use different tools now. So when you're leading at more of a high school level, it's much more personal and much more relational. So recruitment looks different when you're doing one-on-one with high school students. You're looking for people who want to be a part of what you're doing. You're not necessarily looking for specific gifts. You're not necessarily looking for someone who's going to be here for the next 10 years. Who's here right now? Who has got, who's available? Who's right in front of you? Who's the neighbor that you know? Who's the person who shows up on Sunday? Notice who's in the lobby that maybe didn't come into the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Notice the person who comes once a month with their friend or goes with their girlfriend. Reach out to them and pursue them. You have to go after. If you think about high school sports, sometimes Mm -hmm. if you're if you're the high school football coach and you're looking at your team, but you see some really big dude walking down the, you know, who's a freshman who's walking down the hallway, it's like, who are you and how do I get you on my team? And Mm -hmm. even if you don't like tackling, just stand here and look mean, (laughs) right? So you take an assessment of the people you have, Mm -hmm. you find out what their interests are, and then you manipulate, not manipulate, but you maneuver your ministry. Well, you manipulate your own ministry to fit the gifts that God has brought you. Mm -hmm. It's one of the um, unique elements that church planters have Mm -hmm. is to discern their next step in their ministry growth by who God brings them rather than having a vision and saying, how do I recruit who I need? It's the opposite. Who did God bring me and what kind of ministry can I build with the gifts that God has brought me? So it's a little different (laughs) mindset, but it's also a really strategic way that God redirects our ministry vision. Mm -hmm. And now is a time when God is birthing new ministry, new strategies, new ways of doing things. And we actually need our leaders to be innovative. And so if you've had Mm -hmm. big dreams and your goal has been to finish finish them or to please whatever, you know, thing you thought was expected of you. Now is a time to kind of go back to the drawing board with your high school team and ask them, what do you want to be a part of? What's the thing that you're passionate about? What do you think that we need? And you're getting their buy-in and their interest and their information and you build ministry around that. So if you have, for example, If you have four business leaders who are hanging around your church who aren't serving anywhere, I would bring them in. I would talk to them about what are the things you've learned in business and then start talking about that Mm -hmm. with your students. Mm -hmm. If you have a bunch of teachers, if you have a bunch of nonprofit workers, if you know, if it's a bunch of musicians, like then you probably are going to birth some music things through your student ministries. Um, Now, when you go to college, so that would be the high school thing. Any thoughts or comments on that? I was actually just thinking like, uh, for some of the churches that like you feel like you don't have those resources, but maybe those people are in your community. Yes. Maybe there's a bunch of business leaders in your community and you could go sit down with them. Hey, can I buy you lunch? And can I can I pick your brain and just go and listen? Right. We, we used to do this with some of the like first responders in our community. We'd sit down and say, like, what are your guys' needs? And they're like. We actually just need people to like encourage us and say thanks from time. Like, so we would like write them letters or like do things. To so encourage fantastic. Them. Can we give you a water? Like, yep. Yep. They're not going to turn. So you're not down. assuming you know what they need. Correct. You're actually asking them. You're just Love asking it. them. Yeah. So maybe in that level, if you're like, I don't have those people anymore. Can you go find them in, within your community? And and what I'm hearing you saying is like, it's relational credibility. Mm-hmm. You're, you're the new like level of influence is relationships. Yeah. In conversation. Yeah. It's not a relationship that's transactional. I think as yeah. you move kind of up in those different cultures, one of the traps many churches have fallen into is that our relationships are based on someone's engagement engagement. Mm. So we care about them if they show up to serve. Right. If they don't show up to serve, we uh, and they were on the schedule, we noticed because they aren't serving. Right. But if they weren't on and they didn't show up to church, we never noticed. Mm-hmm. We have people who have left their churches and it took six or eight months for anyone even to notice if they ever did that they were gone. And right. so that's part of kind of the reckoning I think God is doing yeah. with our churches. Yeah. And so this high school level really is about relationship. Yeah. It's about conversation. It's about being 
curious and inquisitive about how we can yeah. actually serve the people we're called to serve rather than deciding what we're going to do yep. for you and yep. how, and trying to recruit leaders to this vision that we don't even know if is relevant yeah. anymore. At this and the college level are probably where where most churches are at right now. So yeah. just to kind of keep that in context, if you're listening, you're like, I don't think that's me. It's probably you. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I would say most football churches have gone down to college level, and yep. uh, most people who were doing leadership development for are now finding themselves at high school. Yeah. So if you found yourself moving from football to college, um, so from s- football, I'm sorry, from <laughs> pro, from to pro, there you go, <laughs> to college. Yeah. you know, I have two sports uh, metaphors. I just mixed you were them doing up. great. Right I know, thank you. You were doing so thank good you for your support. You even <laughs> quoted a quarterback and a center. I'm so proud of you, Katie. <laughs> I know those are important roles in hockey, right? So. <laughs> I'm just joking. So uh, if you're now in college, which is where leadership development is actually really key in that sort of space where you have the ability to have some leaders that you Mm -hmm. can either recruit or bring on staff, um, I would say uh, what we're wanting to do is add more tools to the toolbox. So everyone is leading in a different context. We are Mm -hmm. leaning more towards relational engagement, more communal. And many times when we've hired leaders for higher level cultures, Mm -hmm. we're hiring people who are more administrators. They're strategic. Strategic, they're organized, they're, you know, calling out orders, they're making things move efficiently. And those people moving to more relational styles of leadership can be very challenging. And so it's time to add tools to the toolbox. It's time to give resources for yeah. lunches and coffees and and really articulate expectations of I actually expect you to spend 30% of your week in relationships with individuals or couples or families. I want you to have people over to your home. I want yeah. you to take people to coffee. I want you to go to their workplace. We yeah. need to pursue people again instead of waiting for them to come to us. Yeah. You know, if you build it, they will come. Does not work any longer in church ministry. We are in a post church world. Yeah. And so these are some of the things our Canadian friends have had to really learn the last 30 to 40 mm. years. We're just in the beginnings of those spaces. So we have to be missional and, mm. and, uh, proactive in our engagement of people and pursuing them in their own, in their own places. So that's that recruiting style. You know, you don't just sit and wait for, um, for high schoolers to come to your college, you go out and you see their games and you watch them play and you affirm them, you meet with their parents and you recruit them that way. That's really good. I think it, it, that, that mindset shift is a big deal of like, Hey, auditions are happening today or tryouts today. Versus like, hey, you like come. Let me we recruit have, you. We have some some resources available. And, and then you're like, now let me give you the criteria. Here's what we're looking for. Here's a job description. Here's Or actually, here's you were on it with resources. Here's how we'll train you. There you go. Here's yeah. uh, here's the program we have for you to become a worship you you know, leader or to be in the band. Yep. Like we're creating pathways and we're yep. recruiting people into pathways more than selecting them for a role. Good. That's the big shift on this Very one. Good. And so even to recruit them, you have to build relationship because it's relational equity. Relationships are part of what keep people sticking in a ministry as they grow and develop. You're looking for raw material Mm -hmm. that you can steward more than seasoned leaders that you can just plug in and take your hands off of them. And Katie, would you say that it's at this point that then you can start like entrusting them to develop other leaders within those teams? I would say that that right now our, our, our leaders need to be very hands-on for Mm -hmm. the next season. We have a shift in culture. We have people who are questioning their faith like never before. This is not a season to hand a lot of delegation over. This is a season to pull people in very close. Got it. That's helpful. Good. All right. So what does the next phase look like pro how do we get back to that? You just have all the money and you start hiring. I actually people. don't know if we're going <laughs> to see a lot of pro coming back. I think if we're, if you're looking at this as a way to, how do I get out of high school and back to college or out of college and back to to a pro, you're, um, you're asking the wrong questions. There you go. I think God has shaken up those sort of bigger spaces. And I think we need to, uh, even if you might be a part of a big church, I'm not talking about attendance big. I'm talking about the way we function in our cultures. Uh, our culture is demanding more of us as leaders, Mm -hmm. as spiritual leaders, as, uh, disciple makers. They're looking for more engagement uh, yeah. from real people. Um, it comes out in terms of authenticity, of in connection, of in community, of in tribe, but what they're asking for is engagement from right. us to them. Right. And I think most leaders, it's easy to get stuck looking for engagement of our people to us. I yep. think the answer is our engagement to people. Yep. I think that's so good because even uh, the some of the like the very big, large churches that we've been around, 
I know I, I've heard them say, like they joke about like, uh, you know, we, we were at uh, North Coast recently and, you know, they're joking from the stage like none of these are the band up here. Like these are all just paid professionals. They don't even need know Jesus. They're like out smoking <laughs> between songs like and they're joking, but they're they're joking about that context because they're trying to normalize like, hey, we might be a large church and we have a lot of resources, but our methods and how we do things are the same. Right. And we're still trying to do like relational heart to heart evangelism. And like, we're still trying to figure out and solve the same problems that you are. And I would say everyone's got a different pathway to engagement in church community. And so sometimes it's through playing guitar and sometimes it's through a conversation with a friend mm. and sometimes it's through a small group. And we have to be open to all of those mm. pathways working. We might funnel them into something once they're here, right. but we have a lot, we have to rethink our open yeah. doors um, because mm. people are looking for more. In, our culture has shifted to a more individualized society and we can kind mm. of soapbox us about consumerism and things. But the reality is uh, our people, including ourselves, are used to opening up Amazon and getting suggestions on yep. things I actually want to buy. Right. And I want music that's tailored to me. And I want a, a, I want a playlist that is only the songs that are the kind that I want to listen to right now. Our right. culture has shifted. Even medicine, I was doing an interview last night with a biopharma executive, and even medicine, the new um, the new sort of innovation in medicine is going to be uh, making a medicine unique to Eric and a different medicine unique to Katie. That's, that's, that's the individualization. <laughs> that's the individualization. <laughs> yes. And our God knows each of us individually, right? And so yep. like, we're not getting ahead of the Lord. We might yeah. get ahead of us as leaders and right. the way we think about things, but we're not getting ahead of the mm. Lord. And so we're gonna see more and more of that as the norm of how we interact with each other is very customized. Mm. And so we have to create systems and processes that let that high schooler walk in and we have a place for them mm. and we want to know them and they are welcome here and we will find Find a role for them on the team. I love that. I love that. Uh, I think one of the the last things I'll say is like uh, we've talked a lot about in in pro even like with uh, these these leaders that we're going to help um, put resources in their toolbox. Right? Um, is the key piece of stewardship is a mm. big deal. And so like looking at whatever the resources are, whatever you think you don't have, but like look at look at all that God has yes. blessed you with, yes. be grateful and, and blessed because understand how blessed you are because of it. And, and maybe take some rest, maybe take a nap, maybe go on a sabbatical, you know, come back and, and start thinking through these things in a new way of how do we steward the resources that God's given us in order to leverage everything for the yeah. gospel in order to make maximum impact for God's kingdom. I think that's the heartbeat of kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. And I think when we lose that stewardship mindset, we move to striving. Yep. And when we're striving and we're working in our own strength and we're working in the flesh to prove something or to make something or to do mm. something or to get back to something, we're not really stewarding well the things mm. God has put right in front of us now. And his His mission for us is going to involve the resources he gave us. He's not going to expect things of us that he hasn't yeah. given us the resources to accomplish, but we actually have to access the resources he brought to us. Yeah, very, very good. Well, thank you, Katie. This is hopefully helpful for our listeners. I know my brain is now spinning about all good. kinds of things that uh, we can do differently and just even the opportunities that lie ahead of us. Uh, I think it'll be fun when we get to heaven someday and we get to just kind of like, okay, God, that's, <laughs> that's why what you COVID. were doing. <laughs> okay. Wow, we missed it. So uh, don't miss it. You know, we're praying for you as church leaders. We want to be here to be a resource. Uh, we hope that this episode and this conversation is a part of that. If there's any way that we can be a resource to you in any way unique or specific, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, you can always email us info at buildmomentum.org. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, man. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. We'd be really honored if you went ahead and subscribed to the podcast, and that way you can just kind of stay up to date with the episodes that we're posting in the future. As well, please be sure to rate and review us as that helps others know about this resource as well. If you have any other questions or topics that you'd like us to cover or address, please email those to us at info at buildmomentum.org. To learn more about Momentum Ministry Partners and our many other resources, please be sure to follow us on social media at Momentum Ministry Partners. Partners, or check out our website, www.buildmomentum.org. And if you're interested in supporting Momentum, feel free to give us a visit at buildmomentum.org slash give. We'll see you guys next week.
I never know how to end these anymore with. You did great. I don't have a. I don't have. You're like Caleb, a mic drop moment. Caleb took away my ability. We're to 